It's a crude setup, but it got the job done for us. We hate wasting anything when we're uh, making stuff, so this was a solution. Going with two packs of the champagne yeast, just to get that fermentation started as quickly as possible. Today we're at our friend's house, Morningwood Acres, which is the source of our pigs. And today is going to be the source of our apples. We are going to be making apple cider and taking some whole apples for our chili sauce and for fruit leather. This is gonna be a fun day. Let's get to it. What are we doing here, Eli? I was cleaning up all the windfall apples that are uh, not necessarily ideal for con human consumption, but they're perfect for pig consumption. Yes, for the piggies. This is how it all begins. Tarp on the ground, miniature homesteader in the tree, apples on the branch, Raining apples. Apples, so many apples. I'm reaching apples. Okay. Whoa, this is oh, you got one right in the bucket. Ow! Right in the bucket. Oh, please, oh, that's my fault. I really need to sit here because it's important work. You thought you wouldn't understand. Okay. Whoa. They need to be able to be gripped. The round one just, just spinning. So we're cutting them in quarters. This helps them get through the machine a bit quicker. So Dave, what are you doing? Could I reinventing the wheel? Yeah, it looks like it. Got a little motor. It was all just shooting sideways, so they're trying to come up a different configuration. And then we have the cutting crew and the collection crew. And then we have the supervisor. Possibly the most redneck apple chopper you could come up with. But, it's working. Eli's the master chopper. Slop into the press. This is a ratchet press. Slop, slop, beautiful slop. Piggies would love to get a hold of that, I bet. Oh my god, they go crazy. Now for the blocks. Yeah. Are we trying to do more or is that? Yeah, we're doing more. Just get your face out. We stopped because they started doing this because we were, didn't have enough apples. Okay, so I can get back to cutting them. Mm -hmm. You're making it like a jingle tower. What's that? Jigsaw puzzle. 
Yeah, because that big thing is too big to go in the press part. Mm. Oh, so you have to block it up, hey? Mm. Ooh. Make that. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Go the pulp. It's leaking out the side. It's okay. That's why we have that one. There you go. Taste it. How is it? This is almost perfect. Yummy. Apple juice? Yeah. Whoa, look how fast. I think this bat batch was the juiciest, hey? So far, yeah. You and your homesteaders learning the tricks of the trade. What's the starting of your apple song? Right now it's in the middle of a video thing. Sure, yeah. yeah. So I'll tell you later. No, tell us now. It's not even done. But tell us the starting of the apple song. Um, Later. Okay, now you can go back with the ratchet there. 20 liters so far. Then we just gotta keep filling buckets like that. And then we have enough apple juice for the winter. Or for a couple weeks anyways. The motor overheated, so we gotta let it cool down a little bit. Right in the middle of the last batch, Eli raises the pigs for us every year. He raises a pig for us and a pig for them. Maybe it's two pigs for you guys. Is it two pigs for you guys? One for us? Uh, no, one for our uh, Mike. Down the road, Hakey. You want some apples? Come and get your apples, buddy. Sweet. It's a crude setup, but it got the job done for us. I think. I think so. We've got juice. Yeah, we do got we got juice now. Three buckets of apple juice. Three different varieties. So we're gonna mix these together, blend them all up, and then we're gonna split it up and we're gonna take it, turn it into apple cider, various other things. This one's yours, this one's ours, this one's ours, and we're gonna just split this it up, buddy. Ours. We're gonna sp split it up. Ours, ours, ours. What? All right. All right. Uh, well, we're just gonna put it in these big old olive yeah, containers. Yeah, they originally had olives in them. Transport. This, this, that, and most of this is like those are stuff they go in the last time. In place. Thank you. 
we're back home now and it is time to change all of this lovely fresh apple juice into things that we will use over the winter first thing we're gonna do apple cider vinegar Amanda's gonna show you how we make that we make our apple cider vinegar out of the pulp that you get after you remove the apple cider um, so basically I'm going to just take a little bit out of here you want three quarters full of the pulp and then you want to add water to fill it and since a lot of the sugars came out and it's still in the cider I add a tablespoon of sugar per cup of water that I add back in here um, before I let it ferment then I'll just let it ferment as that with a bubbler on top for two weeks and then I'll remove all the pulp out of there and just leave the liquid and then continue to ferment that in a carboy until it is apple cider vinegar. So we hate wasting anything when we're uh, making stuff. So this was a solution to be able to get both apple cider um, as well as apple cider vinegar with, without th basically using everything that came from the apple. Some people just throw this pulp out or just put it in the compost. This is one more life for it before it goes into the compost. Here, Come here. Okay, here you go. The next step is I'm going to add the sugar water. Um, so to do that, I'm just gonna, as I said before, add about a tablespoon of sugar for every cup of water. I have four cups of water here. The type of sugar you use isn't necessarily uh, that important. If you want to keep it all natural, you can use uh, maple sugar here or maple syrup here. You just need something for the yeast to feast on to ferment, to help the ferment, fermentation process. I'm going to pour the sugar water in and then I'm going to get, repeat this process until I have just enough water to cover the apple bits, the pulp that's in here. As you can see, if you push down the floaters at the top, I guess I have about an inch of water on top of the mass of the apple pulp. And you don't want floaters when you're fermenting. So the next step will be to weigh down these floaters. And to do that, I'm going to use a dinner plate and a weight that I have kept separately just for this purpose. And then I'm gonna scoop out some of the floaters here that made it above the plate. Just scooping out the pieces of apple that s sneaked by when I put the plate down so that they won't be touching the air. And those can go to the chickens as well. Finish it off by putting a lid on, seal it tightly with a bubbler to let out gases and let it ferment with the pulp in it for two weeks in a warm, dry spot. After two weeks is done, you can then strain out the pulp and just finish off with the liquid until it's at the desired level of apple cider vinegary you like. Now it's time for the fun part, making the hard apple cider. It's pretty simple, food grade plastic bucket. The other bucket was food grade too. I don't know if Amanda mentioned that, but that's what we use. Most of these buckets are food grade. Let's get started though. First thing I'm going to do is just filter the juice one last time in case there's any chunks of apple or anything like that in there. Some lovely apple juice, nice and dark. So we're just gonna filter this I don't expect there to be too much in there, but you never know. Just give it a little 
to shake, get anything up off the bottom. Not much at all in there, really. Now, how much have we got here? So we can add a little bit more in there. You want to leave a little bit of space because this is going to froth up a little bit once it starts to ferment, get all bubbly on the top. I like my cider a little bit sweeter and a little bit higher of an alcohol content. So I'll be adding in one and a half kilograms of corn sugar. This is basically just brewing sugar for brewing beer or wine or cider, anything like that. It just dissolves a little bit easier. It's more powdery. You can also just use granulated sugar, regular white sugar. You can use brown sugar if you want a slightly darker, more caramel color to your, to your cider. The yeast that I'll be using is a champagne yeast, EC1118. This produces a slightly higher alcohol content. It'll get up around 18% alcohol. You could use a, a different yeast, more of like an ale yeast or something like that if you don't want your cider to be that high in alcohol. You also don't even have to use either one of these if you don't want to. There's enough sugar in there and there's enough yeast, wild natural yeast on the apples to ferment this. We've just done this a few times. This is our preferred method and it's what we go with. So let's get mixing this stuff up. Just gonna start by putting the sugar in. Once we have it in there, we'll get it all stirred up, get it to dissolve. This is what's gonna feed your yeast, this sugar. It might seem like a lot of sugar, but all of that sugar is going to disappear and turn into alcohol. Going with two packs of the champagne yeast, just to get that fermentation started as quickly as possible. You could go with just one package, that's perfectly fine as well. Just might take a little bit longer for the fermentation to start. I'm not gonna worry about proofing the yeast, I'm just gonna put it straight in the bucket here. If I have old yeast that I'm not sure about, I'll usually proof it just to make sure it's still alive. This isn't really that old though, so I'm not going to worry about it. And just stir it around, moisten all that yeast. And the lid, airlock, stopper. Gonna pop this on. And now we're ready to rock. This bubbler will start bubbling. That'll be how you know that your primary fermentation has begun. We'll let that go for a week, possibly two weeks, at which point in time we'll transfer this over into a large glass carboy and we'll just let it sit and age in that carboy before we bottle it. And the last thing we're going to do, we have about 10, maybe 15 liters of apple juice left over. We're going to can this up so that we have fresh apple juice just to drink as it is over the winter. First thing we got to do, we're going to filter it just like we did for the apple cider. Then we're going to pasteurize and we're going to boil just to kill off any yeast or any bacteria that could be in here. And then we'll can it up, just water bath canning, very simple. Not much left over in there, which is good. Nice clean juice. One of the main reasons outside of bacteria for pasteurizing this or bringing it up to a boil is the yeast. If this stuff starts to ferment in your jars, you're gonna have exploding jars in your pantry. Not something you want. Big mess to clean up, huge mess. 
apple juice is up to a boil. I'm just going to let this go for a few minutes. Got the canner starting to heat up. It is a pressure canner, but this is a water bathing method. Just a nice big pot to use for canning. I've let the apple juice cool down a little bit. Now it's time to get it into the jars. Just gonna try and pour it in here. lovely apple juice. Now we'll get the lids on. Once we're up to a rolling boil, set our timer for five minutes. That's it, nice and quick. Apple juice is very acidic, doesn't need much processing time. Five minutes is up. Just gonna kill the heat on this, let it cool down a little bit before I take the bottles out. It's going to be nice to have apple juice over the winter. No preservatives, straight off the tree. Now we'll just wait for all those to seal up and cool down. So that's a little bit of what we do with the apple harvest in the fall. You're going to have to check back in a couple weeks to get the scoop on the apple cider vinegar and the hard cider. See ya.